Hey, this is Kian with the Radiology Scholar Certificate Program with another High Yield Concepts in Radiology video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover shoulder plane film pathology, specifically focusing on shoulder trauma. If you haven't seen our video on dislocations or plane film anatomy, I'll go ahead and link those in the description for you as they may be good to watch before this. Here's our first case with an external rotation view of the shoulder just to get you oriented. This is the humeral head with the greater tuberosity. Here's our glenoid, the coracoid process, the clavicle, the chromium, and the AC joint. This patient presented to us with shoulder pain following some sort of trauma. If you follow the contours of the humeral head here, you can see that there is a fracture of the greater tubercle. Pathology of the greater tubercle is best assessed on the external rotation view. Remember that we spoke in the last video about the internal rotation view being the preferable view to spot the hill sacks defect. The greater tubercle serves as the insertion site for three of the four rotator cuff muscles, those being the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor muscles. Here's that same patient, this time in internal rotation. If you follow the contours of the humeral head, you can still make out some of these fracture lines, but it's not as easy to see as on the external rotation view gone ahead and highlighted those fracture lines for you just to see again that it's more difficult to make out. Here's another patient who presented with shoulder pain following a trauma. If we follow the contours of the humeral head, we can see that there is a fracture of the surgical neck. These proximal humeral fractures are commonly due to falls on an outstretched arm in elderly patients. Anytime we have one fracture, we should always be searching for more. So again, we can see in the same patient that surgical neck fracture, but on this view, we also get a good look at the greater tubercle and we can see that there is extension of the fracture to the greater tubercle. Multiple views can therefore be helpful as well as cross-sectional imaging in the classification of these fractures. One classification system that we can use is called the near classification system, and it can be used to guide surgical management of these fractures. This system is not based on fracture lines, but rather fracture parts. And in order for a fracture part to be considered separate, it needs to have at least one centimeter of displacement or 45 degrees of angulation. In a case like this where the fracture is minimally displaced, this would be considered a one part fracture. This greater tubercle fracture that we saw earlier would also be considered a one part fracture. But you can imagine if this had been displaced more than one centimeter, it would be considered a two part fracture. The AC joint and CC ligament should also be assessed in any case of shoulder trauma. In this case, I've gone ahead and highlighted the coracoid process in red, the acromion in blue, and the clavicle in green. You can see that there is disruption of the AC joint as well as the CC ligament. The Rockwood classification system can be used to describe AC joint injury and pathology. An oversimplified breakdown of the Rockwood classification could be as follows. A grade one would range from normal to simply uh, low grade strains of the AC and CC structures. The patient is upgraded to grade two if there is a disruption of the AC joint with intact CC ligaments. If the CC ligaments are torn and the clavicle is migrated superiorly, it's classified as either a grade three or a grade five. A grade five can be thought of as a grade three with greater than 2.5 centimeters of displacement. Grade four and grade six injuries are much less common with a grade four injury reflecting posterior displacement of the clavicle and a grade six injury reflecting inferior displacement of the clavicle below the coracoid process. In both of these cases, the AC and CC structures are disrupted completely. And finally, here are some fluoroscopic images of the treatment of AC pathology. I've gone ahead and highlighted the acromion, the clavicle in green, and the coracoid process in orange, as well as put the most likely site of the graft. You can also see that the distal portion of the clavicle has been resected. And here it is again without the overlay, so you can appreciate the screw in the coracoid process, as well as the surgical hardware that's likely holding graft in place. 
And that concludes our video on shoulder trauma, focusing on proximal humeral head injuries as well as AC injuries. Thank you for your time.